Hey there, this is for you if you're a tech professional or a business professional or both and you're frustrated with the pace of things or the success of things in your company and you want to do something different. You want to get more out of it. You want to serve your customers better, uh, profits better, whatever those things are. This will absolutely help you do that. And I'm introducing uh, a framework that I'm calling P-L-A-Y. Yes, that spells play. And a lot of you might go, ugh, play. It's a serious work in the business and I gotta be serious and strong and all that. And while that's true, let's talk about how serious it is that tech projects just really aren't succeeding that well. Standish reports that 66% of tech projects end in failure, 66%. McKinsey talks about 17% of large IT projects going incredibly poorly, like millions of dollars of loss poorly. And BCG talks about 70% of digital transformation projects falling short. This is to the tune of about $1.5 trillion a year. It's a very serious business. And I think being more serious about it and doing the same things again and again and again, we're gonna see the same results. We'll see late projects, scope creep, things not working out the way they wanted to, all of those things. And what do we normally turn to? Well, maybe a big three accounting firm, maybe a new tech stack, maybe a change in things in terms of staffing, but those poor results come again and again and again. Our strategic portfolios, if you have them, sometimes there's you know, 10 to 25, $50 million in capital set aside for those strategic portfolios, get more and more filled with compliance things, right? Things that we just have to do. And the wish list grows longer and longer and longer. That doesn't mean those below the line things are less important. They're incredibly important or they wouldn't be there. But how do we score and evaluate those? Well, we do an estimate, uh, best guess with sort of a top down, you know, hope for the best sort of thing. We do a net present value, an ROI, some folks sit in a room and, you know, this is the mix that we think makes sense. What's missing from that is the play framework. And I promise you, if you adopt even a tiny bit of this, you will see drastic improvements. And I know that because I've done that in my own career. Uh, I've encouraged other folks to do that in, in their careers, and it's incredibly powerful. So this short video, I'm just gonna talk about the components of it, and then I have four videos to go through each one with examples of real world examples that really are there. This isn't just something pulled from the sky or chat GPT that sounds good. It's real stuff, and I just put an acronym on it to make it fun and easy to understand. So P-L-A-Y, P stands for prototype and experiment. And there's a reason that's first. Usually people go to estimates or giant spreadsheets of requirements or all these other things that don't work because a lot of reasons, right? But prototype and experiment, and you wanna watch that video, comes first. And you can do this any part of the project. If you're halfway through a thing and it's struggling, you can prototype then. But the more you prototype up front and continuously prototype, the better off you'll be. And you actually, you will hit your timelines a lot more significantly and with the full scope that you want. It sounds weird, but actually doing that up front, doing recess first <laughs> effectively is incredibly important. Okay, second is L. I want you to leverage gamification. So there's ways to encourage people, excite people, pull people into things using some very simple gamification. These are tiny little tweaks. Okay, this isn't a giant platform or a big RFP or this giant meeting you need to have and get approvals. Just little bits of gamification will move the dial. So that's P&L. A is adapt with mashups. So a lot of times we can get hard centered on we need this new technology stack or this new approach or this new thing. If you're at a larger enterprise, you probably already have a tech stack that is more than great enough. And instead of getting so high centered on super technical elegance, and I love all my technical friends and I was an architect, I get it. But there are times at doing appropriate mashups, at least as a phase to your end state, that's this ideal technology and business state, make a ton of sense and they will move you forward and we'll talk about that. And the last is yield and use neuroscience. So there's some very practical ways here. Neuroscience is a big word and you don't have to memorize how all the brain works. But if you do have a basic understanding of how the brain works and you know how to motivate people that are stuck or projects that are stuck or programs that are stuck or companies that are stuck, you can really move the dial forward. And the, again, the same old command control things, the same old things you're probably trying to use that aren't successful, using them more won't make them successful, right? I laugh at that, but I've certainly done it and I see people do it again. This is not working, so let me do it more and harder and be surprised it's not working. So that's the PLAY framework. 
Very excited to share it with you. I finally kind of packaged this in a way I can share it with people and they can use it. Um, if that's interesting to you, there's four other videos coming up. PLAY, you want to uh, make sure to subscribe and like and do all those things for the algorithm. But most importantly, share this with a friend. You probably know a friend that's struggling with projects or a coworker or something like that, and this can help you move the dial forward. So looking forward to seeing you in the next four videos.